Hi, I'm 8-Pack and I'm here to introduce to you the 1080Ti Hoff 8-Pack Edition by KFA2. Here we have the very nice packaging with the 8-Pack approved logo here, uh, the RGB logo and obviously NVIDIA's traditional uh, green colour styling there on the box with the Hall of Fame logo there. Now we've checked the packaging, let's check the card itself. Firstly, uh, I'm going to go through the power delivery of the card, which is very important on Pascal GPU. Uh, what we've got is 16 phases of power being supplied to the GPU, which is obviously a 1080 Ti mounted to the board. These 16 phases are, are way overkill for a card of this spec, but what it, what it means is that the VRM is running a very low temperature, the heat soak into the board is also a very low temperature, and the quality of power to the GPU itself is very good. The memory on the card is supplied by three further phases and, and again the, the quality of power because of the over specking of the phase is very good and the temperature across this VRM is also very low. This is putting less stress on the cooler and obviously the, with Nvidia's uh, boost technology the lower the temperature of the GPU and PCB allow for a higher boost so you get higher performance because of the uh, extra quality of the PCB. Also. So spread the load across the power connectors, uh, across, uh, across the power going into the card, we've got three 8-pin connectors here, instead of the usual two which NVIDIA are using. This is especially important when you're extreme overclocking or when you're adding voltage, because then uh, the VRM is pulling power via all three connectors and it's much more even load. What KFA have done here also is that they've added uh, an international rectifier standard controller on the board, which can easily be controlled by software. And obviously for the extreme overclocker or someone again wanting to push the system, a little bit of voltage can help gain stability uh, for the higher overclocks on someone wanting the optimal ultimate performance, which is what this card's designed for. It's designed for the ultimate end gamer uh, and the ultimate end benchmarker, or also the professional wants crazy fast rendering uh, and they want to gain a little bit more performance, they can also overclock it. Now we've gone through the power delivery to the card, let's check out the aesthetics and the cooler. The cooler is a three slot design which means you can only fit two in any motherboard so the most you can do with this is two ASLI. The cooler has three 90mm fans and when the, when the system's fully installed, obviously I've actually got drivers on this, it's just a demo system, the three fans are not spinning at all. So it's completely silent when there's no load on the card. And as you can uh, probably see, it's a very robust cooler. The cooler itself also has five heat pipes, which are help dissipating the heat across the fins, which are then cooled by the fans. The cooler itself is RGB. So we've got uh, RGB light around the fan here. We've got RGB on the uh, crest here and RGB on the power connectors here. Also along the top here, we've got RGB here and here. And finally, down the connectivity ports here, we've got RGB. The connectivity of the card is uh, three display port, one HDMI and one DVI. Because KFA have decided to add a DVI port, essentially for the benchmarker, uh, which is the better connectivity option on LN2, this card cannot be reduced to one slot like a Founders Edition card would be. This card's minimum, even with a water block, is two slots. We've also on the I.O. here, we've got a turbo button, which means that the fans spin at 100% and it raises the power limit. The only reason you should do this if you want the system to remain quiet is if for benchmarking sessions. Then obviously that keeps the GPU temperature to a maximum minimum and, and it can remain stable for longer while you're pushing frequency higher and higher. On the top of the card here we've got a unique LCD display which you'll see in the 8-pack approved and 8-pack version of uh, the 1080 Ti. This LCD display at the moment is displaying the Hoff logo but it can be used to put your own custom text on there, which can be in line with the system or the system name, something like that. But it can also be used for system monitoring, such as GPU temperatures, GPU frequency, GPU memory frequency, and so on and so on. Almost every system variable can be added to, to here to the top. The GPU itself has uh, a nice monochrome black plate on the back, which is very rigid and is keeping the PCB from warping even when you're pushing it hard in long gaming sessions and obviously adds to the longevity of the PCB and like I said stops that uh, warping which can cause problem with the BGA. Now we've discussed uh, a little bit about the looks uh, and the back plate. We can truly see that this uh, card will look fantastic in a white themed system 
uh, especially if you have white memory sticks and white motherboard or indeed a white and black system or also because it's got RGB uh, it might you might want it as the wow factor of a system and then link the RGB in with the color of the cables or highlight something on the motherboard as well so it's appropriate almost to all systems where the absolute high-end high-end gaming performance is wanted now we've discussed a bit about the look of the card the power delivery uh, the connectivity let's move on to the benchmarks or the performance so when you uh, install the card in the system install the drivers and set some benchmarks for any what what can you expect from the card well i did this over several hours of testing and what i, ex what I saw uh, by monitoring the card was that the boost frequency at stock was between 20, 20, 2025 so 2025 megahertz and 2050 which is a very high stock boost clock in fact the highest 1080 ti i've seen the memory was clocked at 5600 megahertz also at stock well, running at these uh, frequencies for hours on end, I also monitored the temperature of the GPU, and this never went over 66 degrees C in a in an, uh, a warm office room, which was around 23. So the delta there is around 43 C, which it, which means that the cool is absolutely fantastic. Especially saying that the fans never went above 49% of the maximum potential. So the card was also completely silent. Well, well, pushing the performance way beyond anything we've seen in 1080 Ti before. These. These perform the performance figures at these uh, frequencies were around 24,500 to 25,000 in Firestrike, which is a 1080p test. In the TimeSpy uh, DirectX 12 test, we were around the 12K mark. And in the Firestrike Ultra, which is the 4K resolution test, we we're about 7.4, 7.5K. Once I'd done all this and checked uh, for several hours on all the tests, I decided to move over and do a little bit of overclocking. I kept the fans at the same speed because I'm aware that gamers don't want the, the fans up 100% and uh, the system to be screaming in their ears. So I wanted to keep the fans no long, still got, not going uh, more than 49 to 50% and the temperatures still remain in the 66 degrees, degrees C mark even when you push the frequency further. So, per, so perfect really. So what I was able to get out of the GPU was uh, over 2100 megahertz at 2125, completely stable. Uh, just by adjusting the power limit and adjusting the frequency with software. The memory I could add around 700 megahertz, so the effective memory speed then was 6,350. This gave a healthy boost to all my benchmarks, with Firestrike now being over 26.5k, TimeSpy well over 12k, and Firestrike Ultra, which is the 4k test, well over 8,000 points. So I, I think you'd agree, this is really the card for the Elite tier, with even more performance on hand should you wish to overclock it, but obviously great plug and play functionality too. If you want to find out more of the card, follow the links in the description below. I'll be offering support and showing the screenshots of the benchmarks on our forums, and also obviously go to our website to buy the card. Thanks for watching, I'm 8pack.